a lot of my operating is portable, or maybe I should say backyard portable. Because I live in a homeowners association, of course, I do have stealth antennas that are up permanently. But a lot of times when I play radio, I take an antenna, I set it up in the backyard like I was doing a POTA operation. I use it for a confined time period. I take it down. We're used to doing this for POTA, for going to a friend's house, to a club, to try to demonstrate the specific use case for some gear. We're used to doing this with our 17-foot whips. It gives us 20 meters fully extended, and we can get 6 through 17 if we just collapse some of the sections. Chameleon has provided a way to quickly get us onto 40 meters with this medium coil. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. I'm Bob, amateur radio call sign, Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. And what I have on the workbench in front of me here is the BV, the basic vertical. And you could make this up with a lot of components that maybe you already have. And Chameleon has provided these components a la carte, so to speak. So you can buy only what you need to complement what you already own, or you can buy an entire kit. But the reason I want to show this one is because a lot of POTA operators like to operate on 40. So if they have some type of base, some way of mounting a 17-foot whip that gets them on 20, how can they quickly get to 40? Well, set this up initially. Well, then how do you go back to 20? <laughs> well, create for yourself some type of a jumper. I'm going to use a jumper I had created previously. We're going to go backyard portable. We're going to show this setup for 40 and how I use the jumper to get to 20. And then if you wanted to go higher than 20, you would start collapsing your uh, telescoping antenna. If I were starting from scratch today, this is what I would use to make a new jumper. I wouldn't use two alligator clips. I would use this ring terminal and this banana plug on one end and then an alligator clip on the other with some wire in between. But let me show you today, um, I'm going to use an existing jumper. Still, I'm going to use this ring terminal because it accepts banana plugs. Again, if I were making a jumper specific to this, and I didn't already have one that would get the job done, this is what I would do. So I'm going to use a ground stake. I'm going to use uh, the blank adapter. So let's move this out of the way so I can get my SS17 on the screen and you can see how the setup goes. This is the radiating side of this blank adapter. This is the ground side. It is separated by a Delrin spacer. So what I'm going to do is take the stud that comes with the medium coil and I'm going to insert that into my blank adapter. I'm going to put my ring terminal here. It's loose, that's okay. Get another ring terminal. If you don't wanna use this one, just make sure you get one that can accept banana plugs. That's what this one does do. That's why I choose it. Then I'm going to put my medium coil on here that lets me get to 40 meters. Tighten that down. And now my banana plug connector, my ring terminal has conductivity. So my signal coming through my coax is going up through here, radiating up to my 17 foot whip and I have continuity here. So now I can get 40 meters out in the field. And if I want to get to 20 meters, what am I going to do? Well, remember I'm using an existing jumper. If I was using my banana plug jumper, in would go my banana plug and up goes my wire. I'm using an existing cable, I clip it on top of that banana plug connector, clip it on top of the base. And now I have jumped, so to speak, my coil. RF is going to take the path of least resistance. It's going to go to my 17 foot whip. It's going to bypass my medium coil. And that's how I get on 20. And if I wanted to start collapsing this antenna, I could get six through 17. Let's take it backyard portable, set it up and get some SWR readings as well as, well, let's make some contacts. For those of you for whom this is second nature, just indulge for a few seconds or go ahead and fast forward through the video. I want to show some of the operators who are more towards the, you know, just learning how this works. What I mean when I say continuity, because sometimes these types of adapters confuse people. How we install our antennas, some people don't understand where the RF is going, where the ground is, 
where the RF is radiating. So I just want to quickly show this for the newer hams or those who don't quite understand these concepts. Remember, I'm a Bachelor of Arts guy in a Bachelor of Science world. This is science. So let's explain it to those who don't quite understand it as well as some others. So I said the top portion here is radiating. It's radiating through my medium coil. It's radiating through my 17 foot telescoping antenna. But I said the base of this is the ground. Well, if my signal is coming out of here, how can this be both ground and signal? Well, your signal is coming out through the center pin of your SO239 connector. The center pin is where we have continuity to the antenna. See, watch. Continuity. Also watch right here when I touch my banana plug ring terminal continuity. So you see, I can jump from here up to here and bypass my coil. That's why this works. If I touch the outside of my connector, I don't have continuity anymore, right? Because the outside of my connector is what? It's connected to the shield of my coax, it's ground. So the inside is my continuity to the radiator. And that's why the jumper works. Down here on the bottom, there is no continuity. There is no continuity with the outside of my SO239. So that's just a quick explanation for those of you who sometimes need some help with these explanations. What you really need to do when you're trying to understand your antenna is get out your multimeter and you know see where the signal is traveling and that will help you with understanding and learning the science of this. I'll set up here in the backyard, just like I did in the shack. I'll give you a close up so you can really see the process. Yeah, there used to be a massive oak tree back here, so I have to poke around until I can finally get that ground stake into the ground. And then, yep, you should be jealous of my soil. It's not only great for ground radials, it's easy for me to push my spike into the ground. I've added the puck here so I can easily attach my banana plug radials and that blank adapter that's just passing our signal through. The medium coil not only gets you on 40, but if you collapse the whip just a bit, you can also get on 30 meters if that's how you choose to roll. The SS17 goes on top of the setup. You can see just off to the right, right where I covered with my hand, that the banana plug ring adapter is sticking out, and that's where I'm going to clip on right now. And this is how we're going to jump. We're going to connect to the bottom of our SS17. That's how we jump over or bypass that coil so we can operate on 20 and that's what we're going to do. We're going to operate 20 first. You've seen me throw my ground radials here all the time in the backyard. When I go portable, say away from the home, I use chameleon wire because it's stronger than this Bianteco wire. In my backyard, I use this wire because if I break it when I step on it, I just go in the house and get another bundle of radials. So our SS17 is fully extended. Let's go ahead and check SWR on 20, 1.71. Of course I want good antenna performance, but once I get close to 1.5 to one, I don't stress a whole lot about my SWR. I'll operate two to one. The way that you could influence this more if you wanted to would be to mess with the number or the length of radials. <laughs> I'm good enough. I'm going to operate. I very quickly get into a pile up. People trying to make contact with Whiskey for India and on my third try, I broke through no problem. Thank you, Whiskey for India. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Delta 59. 5 9 Tampa, Florida. Kilo Whiskey for India. The M coil is made with premium materials that can take the heat. So I'm going to put 100 watts through it digital. That's what it's rated at. Also 200 watts single sideband. I use FT8 for testing purposes only at this point in my ham way of life. And you can see within a matter of minutes, I responded to CQ and was being heard and completed those contacts as well as made contacts calling CQ. PSK reporter says I am hearing as well as being heard. It's a pretty active day on 20 meters FT8. With 20 meters performing just as I expected it would, I went to the backyard, pulled my jumper, and here's my SWR reading. No modifications other than pulling the jumper. This is good enough for me, so I'm going to operate. If you are kind of obsessed with this, you could play with your radials a little bit more for me ready to go. I had equal success on 40 meters. My first attempt at making a contact, I completed that contact on the very first attempt. CQ contest, CQ 
Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. 84 BMG, you're 59 Old Man. 59 Tampa, Florida. Very good, thanks. Two hours at. Let's take 100 watts, pump it through this medium coil on FT8 on 40 meters, similar results as on 20. Within a couple of minutes, I have made multiple contacts, both answering CQ as well as calling CQ, and PSK reporter says I'm hearing as well as being heard. I added a whisper map to this. I turned on my whisper transmitter, let it run through the night about 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. I have a very respectable map here for the United States as well as contacts being made into Europe. In other words, they are hearing my transmitter. This is a weak signal propagation report. So what are my final thoughts on this medium coil, as well as the other recent additions to the Chameleon line, like the blank adapter and the insulator? Premium materials, precision machining, quality craftsmanship, rapid deployment, and exceptional functionality and performance. Uh, what more is there to be said? Good gear. Hope you found this useful. I'll talk to you soon, friend. 73.